Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today we're taking a look at some of the best knives of the year as I run you down my top 20 knives of 2020. Let's check them out. All right, so to set the stage, I'm gonna say all these knives up here today are my opinions. They're not based on sales or potential impact on the industry or anything else uh, other than the fact that these are things that I'm just still really excited about. They're things that get me going. Uh, and as such, that is gonna leave a lot of great knives off the list. Uh, for instance, the Kershaw Lucha has been a huge hit and it's a very nice valley song, but I'm not really a, a butterfly knife guy, so it's not gonna be on this particular list today. But make sure to let us know your favorites down there in the comments, because uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think as well. Um, but let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to stick to mostly production stuff here, uh, not getting into some of the high-end customs. And I've got some folders, some fixed blades, and I'm going to break them down into, uh, into price brackets on the folders and give you five kind of from each section. Uh, so I'm going to start actually with stuff running from zero up to $75. And the first knife is the Dozier Folding Hunter from K-Bar, recently upgraded to D2 steel coming in at 33 bucks. Now this knife has always offered a ton of bang for your buck uh, because it's got a, a nice low price, but a very capable steel and a very versatile shape overall. And now with the upgrade to D2, it still maintains a very strong value proposition. Now it does lack some of the, uh, the modern cool features like a ball bearing pivot, a flipper tab, or a deep carry pocket clip. But what it does have is a time proven design that's very capable. It's also a very easy recommendation for me to make to most people uh, because it's a design that's gonna work just about everywhere. That blade is just under three inches, so a nice compliant length, and it's got that versatile, uh, I keep using that word, that very versatile spear point shape uh, that's gonna work well EDC, and of course with a name like Hunter, it's gonna work well in the outdoors as well. It's got a single-sided thumb stud, but it is reversible to either side, so lefties or righties will be able to use this equally as well. Same goes for the mid-mounted back lock and the pocket clip, which can be swapped to the other side. The handle as well has a nice neutral shape. It's something I usually tend to appreciate very much, especially on uh, more budget-oriented folders, but in general overall. But as such, it's gonna work with all kinds of different hand shapes and sizes, whether they're big or small or slightly larger than average like mine. But I don't think you're ever gonna regret having a, a just nice, capable, abusable knife like this around. And plus, the colors on this particular version look pretty cool too. It's just not a, it's not just another black handled knife, which I definitely, definitely appreciate. This next knife is a black handled knife, however, uh, but this is the Revo Ness coming in at 48 bucks right now. Now, a lot of you channel regulars out there uh, are very well aware that I'm a big fan of the Nesmuk blade shape. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I've got a lot of custom Nesmuks in my collection at home, but you don't often see a lot of folders kind of tackling that blade shape uh, in the production environment today. So this one immediately caught my eye when I saw it at SHOT Show earlier this year, and it's turned out great, and it joins the ranks of the, uh, the archetypal $50 D2 flippers. There's a lot of knives that fit that criteria out there these days, and it's great to see such high performing specs in that sub $50 price point. And I just love their interpretation of the Nesmuk with the Revo Ness. Obviously the original Nesmuk is a classic hunting knife pattern, but along with that comes a nice slicing profile, which you see here. D2 steel, as I mentioned, about 3.6 inches of blade length and a really nice stone washed finish on there, which again, I love a Nesmuk and I love a stone washed finish too. Uh, not only do I think that they look really nice, but it's also gonna help scratches as you use your blade to kind of blend into the finish. So it's gonna be looking nicer, longer, so to speak, uh, than some other finishes out there. Also, since this blade is D2, which is not technically stainless, it's kind of a semi-stainless steel, the stone washing process actually helps a little bit with the, uh, the corrosion resistance on this blade because it kind of seals up some of the pore, the micro pores on the surface of the steel in the process. So that's another added bonus there. The handle itself is nice. We've got G10 over a liner lock. A few different colors are available and it fits in my hand very nicely and it orients the, uh, the long continuous sweeping belly of the blade at just the right angle where it's just ready to slice. You can feel it as soon as you pick it up. 
We've also got a nice deep carry pocket clip. It's right side tip up only. They've also done a good job of making it a very easy to use pocket clip. And what I mean by that is they've milled out a small section so they could inset the pocket clip into the G10. And they've also used flush screw heads so that there's nothing there to snag on your pocket when you go to put it away. Also, I mentioned it is a flipper. We've got ball bearings in the pivot, like a lot of the knives in this genre. And the action is quite nice. All right, this next knife was kind of a surprise hit in the, uh, the affordable knife genre, and that's the CJRB RIA, versions of which in G10 or carbon fiber start around 32 bucks. Now it's got fairly simple lines, I'd say, and especially in this Knife Center exclusive pack of wood version, it definitely has some old school pocket knife vibes, just kind of modernized and updated a bit. But the thing that makes it truly special is the action. Now, when I first got my hands on a sample of this knife, it was love at first flick. The action, fantastic. We've got ball bearings in the pivot and a single thumb stud on this design, but it's at just the right spot. So with just a little bit of pressure at just the right angle, the blade just pops right open. In fact, I thought it was assisted the first time I did. It's really that good. But as soon as we did that first flick, immediately we knew we had to spec out some custom variations, some Knife Center exclusive variations. And you better believe we were on the horn that day because we were really excited about this blade and that excitement hasn't let up. Now I've actually got our two uh, exclusive variations on the table right now. We've got a pack of wood version uh, that comes in about 55 bucks and a marbled carbon fiber version that comes in about 75 bucks. Uh, so these are uh, more expensive than the base models, but even the base models are quite nicely executed and the materials are good too. G10 or carbon fiber for those $32 level ones. And they come with a Sandvik 12C27 blade under that three inch mark. Great, simple stainless steel that's gonna take a real fine edge very nicely, easy to maintain. And it's good to see stuff like that in the, uh, the budget knife arena. I think it's a nice upgrade over some of the other budget steels out there. Now those versions also have a deep carry pocket clip to keep it nice and nestled down inside the pocket when you're carrying it. But these exclusive versions we have actually we spec'd out with a milled titanium pocket clip. The first samples we saw actually had this style of clip on it and there was just something about it that seemed so right on this knife. Even though a lot of the times I tend to prefer a deep carry pocket clip, this one was absolutely the way to go we think. Now these exclusive versions also feature their new budget oriented powder metallurgy steel which is RPM 9 which is a really exciting development, especially with the performance they've been able to hit. They've gone for edge retention on par with, or maybe even a little better than D2, but it's also gonna be fully stainless and much easier to sharpen and maintain. So that's a really, really nice innovation in the affordable knife atmosphere. Now you can also get that steel uh, in one of our non-exclusive variations. There's also a green micarta version with a deep carry pocket clip, uh, and that comes in just over the $50 mark as well. All right, next up is the CRKT Overland by TJ Schwartz, coming in right now at 55. Now, as someone like me who likes to cook, I always appreciate a folder that looks like it's gonna have some nods towards food prep. And because of the offset of the edge to the handle itself, it's gonna give you a little bit of knuckle clearance where you could work on a cutting board, but it's not just for food prep. This is actually a really nice EDC folder as well. It's gonna work on anything where you might need to cut or score on a surface. And with that modified Warncliffe blade, you're gonna be able to do some really nice heavy tip work with it, as well as longer cuts without having to worry as much about your tip slipping out of a cut. Now, one thing that's always hard to tell from photos, especially on a folder, is the balance point. And most folders tend to be a little handle heavy. So I was really delighted to find out that this folder balances right where your index finger hits which means even though it's small and not exactly heavy, the balance is perfectly nimble. You're not fighting the weight distribution of the blade or the handle, and it's just ready to move with you and not against you. Now, as far as the rest of the specs, we've got an 8CR13 MOV stainless steel blade with a nice black stone wash finish coming in just under three inches again. Now, while a full flat grind might've made it a little better if it were a dedicated food prep knife, they've gone with a sort of mid-height flat grind. You might call it a saber grind. Uh, to give it a little more beef at the spine, a little more lateral strength, so you could do some of the heavier tasks with it, which I think is, is a good way to go. If I'm in the kitchen, I'm probably not actually gonna be using my folder. And with a blade shape like this, it's just great for the everyday utility and the strength is definitely appreciated for some of those tasks. Handles are green G10. We've got an orange pivot collar and backspacer. Gives a nice pop of color there. 
And then we've got a stainless steel frame lock on the back, also with a black stone washed finish. And then like that Revo, really nice execution of the pocket clip on this design. It is inset as well and flush screw heads on top of that. And then even more so than the Revo, you combine that with the smoothness of the stainless steel on the frame lock, means this is going to be a very easy knife on your pockets. All right, the last knife in our sub $75 tier is a Swiss Army knife. And ever since Victorinox took their Pioneer, added a pair of scissors to it and called it the Pioneer X, people, including myself, have been clamoring for this next knife, the Farmer X. Now the base Farmer is already a great knife. And if you were to narrow down all of the, uh, the Alox aluminum handled Swiss Army, Army knives and narrow it down to just one knife that's like the outdoorsman's knife, it would have been the Farmer. But I really like a pair of scissors too. So the fact that we have the Farmer X now is really great. But those Alox handles, of course, are more durable than the classic red plastic or Celador handles, uh, but they're typically a silver color, but you can still get it in red with our Knife Center exclusive red Farmer X. And the color on these is really fantastic. It has a nice sparkle and a real nice glow to it. But enough of the preamble. The thing that makes this knife special and makes it a really good outdoorsman's choice is the selection of tools. To start out with, we've got the bottle opener and can opener. Not necessarily outdoor centric, but that's a classic combination and a very versatile combination that you can use for a lot of different things. Main blade, of course, and these are a little bit thicker, as you can see. So not only do you have a little extra strength from the aluminum frame, but you've also got a little more strength at the spine of these blades as well. It is just a simple stainless steel, so you're not going to be uh, cutting for days on end without having to sharpen it but that little bit of extra rigidity is definitely appreciated. You've also got a nice little wood saw, great as far as pocket size wood saws go, as well as a nice awl here, which can be used for scraping tasks. You can use it, for, of course, for piercing, whether through leather or wood when you're making sort of kind of bushcrafty stuff. And both the edge on this, as well as the spine on that saw, also make good strikers for a ferrocerium rod. Again, great thing for the outdoorsmen out there. But that's the Farmer set of tools, but this is the Farmer X, so we've got the pair of scissors. I love having a pair of scissors on my Swiss Army knife. I usually pair mine with another, uh, another larger blade, so what I wind up using the most on whatever Swiss Army knife I'm carrying usually is the pair of scissors, and I'm glad to see this on the Farmer X. All right, now we're gonna take a look at folders in the $75 to $150 range. And I'm going to start with the parent company to the CJRB RIA we looked at earlier, and that's Artisan Cutlery with their small Archeo, specifically our Knife Center exclusive small Archeos with a non-locking blade. Now I have to admit, I'm actually usually not a big fan of knives with this type of single detent or even double detent mechanism. I actually prefer the sort of the stiffness of a traditional slip joint, mostly for safety reasons, but this knife actually changed my mind on that, at least in terms of this particular design. But with this, you've got the convenience of a non-locking blade, but there are a few safety measures in place that really put my mind at ease, and they've even made it flippable, which is really impressive. There's definitely an easy open and close, as you can see, but as to the safety measures that I really like here, first of all, you've got that flipper tab, which if you happen to break the detent loose, your finger is actually going to stop that blade from closing any further. Now, if that wasn't enough, you've also got a small steel pin and you can actually slot that into the handle right behind the tang of the blade and that's going to fix it in place and it's not going to close at all then. And you can even do that when the knife is closed as well so it's not going to accidentally come open. But even when you set aside the mechanism for a minute, it's just a great general shape for everyday carry. We've got a few different versions. Uh, two of them started 100 bucks or just under 100. We've got a pack of wood version here with gold accents. We've also got a black and orange G10 with some blue accents. And for a few bucks more, uh, just under 120, we've got a marbled carbon fiber version as well. Blades on these, modified Warncliffe, as you can see. Nice, acute point. You'll be real easy to open up packages or boxes, that sort of thing. And the steel here is VG10 based Damascus. So it not only just looks good from that Damascus style construction, you've also got a pretty decent steel behind it as well. So it's not just for looks. Also that blade length is under three inches as well. And when you take all of these things together, that sub three inch length and that non-locking nature, this really is a knife that could fit in in a lot of places where some other styles of knives might just be verboten. 
Now, next up is the Boker Gulo Pro coming in about 9750 right now. And this is not a knife that made it onto the list because of the materials it's made out of, but it's here because of what they've managed to do with those materials. And in the sub $100 price point, there really aren't a lot of knives out there I can think of that are nicer than this. I mean, the term poor man Sebenza is something that gets thrown around a lot, but for under $100, this is definitely the place to start looking. All of that comes down to the feel in the hand and the precision you see when you're holding it as well. You've got a D2 blade, about three and three eighths of an inch long, great versatile drop point shape, great all around grind with the, uh, the mid height flat grind going on there. And the stainless steel handles aren't really all that heavy either because they've milled out some inside pockets very significantly to remove some of that bulk. Now we've also got ball bearings in the pivot on this knife, but no flipper tab, just the single thumb stud and the feel there, really very nice overall. Even the choice of the blue accents on all the, uh, the pivot points, the thumb stud and the pocket clip there do a great job of making this knife look and feel a lot more premium than it is. Now I know some of you are gonna look at the, uh, the blade steel and the handle material compared to the price and just look the other way. That's fine, I don't see, uh, I, I, I don't hold that against you. But for those of you that are kind of intrigued by the shape, just know if you do pick one of these up, it's gonna feel like a lot more than a hundred bucks. All right, next up is the Benchmade Presidio 2 CF Elite. Now I've long been a fan of Benchmade's Griptilian. It's featured very heavily in my EDC rotation. But with the recent switch over from aluminum handles to this CF Elite material, it really feels to me like this is a bigger, better Griptilian in a way. And that's because it carries some of the same features that make that knife work so well. But what it really comes down to for me, the reason I make that, that statement, or the reason I think it's a more favored Griptilian for my uses, is I like the blade shape and the grind a little bit better. You've got a slightly more traditionally shaped drop point here, S30V steel, and the grind is a little higher than you'll find on most of the Griptilians out there. So the slicing geometry is gonna be a little bit better. Now both sizes, the mini and the large Presidio 2 are a little bit bigger than the, uh, the comparable Griptilians. We've got about three and three quarters of an inch of blade on this particular knife, but it's not all that much more expensive. It's only uh, this particular one comes in about 132. Similar to the Griptilian, however, we've got a nice neutrally shaped handle. Again, I've covered why that's important. Different hand sizes are gonna be equally at home on a handle like this. That CF Elite has a nice, interesting feel. It's a little softer, eh, that might be a strange word, but it's got a slightly different feel than your standard plasticky handle and a really nice dark graphite color. It's not pitch black. So there's a little bit more interesting to look at in that regard as well. We've also got a deep carry pocket clip, which I appreciate. And of course, a crossbar lock, Benchmade's famous axis lock. I've always appreciated this lock. It's probably if I had to narrow it down to one being my favorite, it would be a crossbar lock because they're easy to use. You can flick the blade closed and open if you like. Easy to do it more deliberately as well. And of course you can do it very easily with either hand too. Plus it's also nice and strong, which I also appreciate. And is after all what you want a lock to be. Now if this one is too big for you, 3.7 inches is a lot for a, a folding knife, uh, but we're gonna have something even bigger here shortly. You could always go with the mini Presidio 2, which is about a 3.2 inch blade and comes in cheaper still than this. All right, next up, I've got another crossbar locking knife and that's the Hogue Deca, which comes in about 140 bucks to start. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Didn't this knife come out at the tail end of last year? Well, you would be correct, uh, but the reason I've got it in this particular video comes down to the nature of the way these kind of end of year wrap up videos are produced. When we're kind of putting them together, putting the content and the list together, it's the early part of December at the latest when we're creating this content. So things that show up at the uh, tail end of December, never had a chance to make it onto those lists. And in fact, we, uh, we didn't advertise this particular knife until December 31st last year. So I never got a chance to recognize it because I love this knife. So I'm gonna put it on this list and I don't care what you think. Um, I really like it. <laughs> but the reason I think you guys will like it too, a lot of you guys already know about this knife and, and like it for the very same reasons I do. You've got a very nice combination of American construction, really nice materials, and a very competitive price for what you're getting. 
We're already off to a good start with a CPM 20 CV blade, about three and a quarter inches. And we've got two variants. You've got the nice clip point profile here, as well as a very angular uh, Warncliffe style of profile with some compound grinds going on. It's very Elishowitz in its nature, which makes sense because this is an Allen Elishowitz design. Now, one of the things I really appreciate about those blades, I tend to prefer the clip point for the record, just because that's the kind of guy I am, but I like how thin they've kept the steel. They didn't go with a, a thicker blade steel, which really comes together and helps make this knife a very good slicing little cutter for everyday carry. It's not a full flat grind, but it's fairly high. Um, and a lot of people actually think of this as a natural competitor to the Benchmade bug out. It's just a tiny bit heavier and a tiny bit more expensive but the, uh, the upgrade you get in the niceness of the materials is definitely something that people appreciate. We've also got several different colors of G Mascus, which is just G10 with a sort of more chaotic pattern going on. This is the blue and black one, as you can see. Uh, but there are some more subtle or more neutral colors, including a black handle as well. And there's some black coated blade options too. We've also got a two position pocket clip. It's not deep carry, but it is nice and narrow. And they even give you a clip plate on the other side to uh, kind of cover up those screw holes on whatever side you're not using. And we've also got their version of the crossbar lock, which they call the able lock, which if anything is even smoother than the way Benchmade executes it. Every, just about every one I've ever picked up has been fantastic with some excellent flicking action right out of the box. Now, if you're still a little bit on the fence with this design, I think it really does come down to the execution from that blade to the lock. Everything is done really well. And a real key indicator of that is the factory edge itself. I've said it a few times before that I think Hogue is probably one of the best, if not the best factory edges in the business. They all come nice and sharp and very highly refined. And this one is no exception. All right, the last knife in this section of folders is the Cold Steel 4MAX Scout, which comes in at about 110 bucks right now. And it makes it for one very simple reason. It just looks awesome. It's definitely a beast of a folder. Big, yes, but it's also nicely suited for practical heavier tasks out there. The camper in me actually loves this knife, even though I'd be the one actually carrying a fixed blade instead anyway but you got a broad four inch blade, OS 10 steel, backed up by full liners and the triad lock. All of that means this knife is ready to take a beating. The handle's very nice too, actually. It's got an orange peel texture for traction and multiple grip options. You've of course got just your standard grip, but you can also choke up onto the choil for some finer work and even choke back into a grip that seems like it's encouraging you to actually chop with this knife. Now that's not exactly conventional, but if there's any folder out there that could stand up to that sort of task, a triad lock equipped knife like this one would be a good bet to survive it. All right, next we're gonna open it up to everything 150 bucks and above. And I know that's a huge range, uh, but it is true at a certain point, uh, you're only gonna get incremental improvements for the amount of money you, you're spending. So that's why I felt real comfortable with these kind of price breakdowns. The other thing to remember is I'm not saying that any of these knives are the best of the year. Uh, they're just my favorites of the year in that price range. Uh, but again, let us know your favorites down in the comments. And the first knife is the Benchmade Bailout, the new M4 versions, which started about 212 bucks. And this is essentially a knife for guys like me. It's a Tonto for people who don't normally like Tontos. I'll get to why in a minute. Uh, but this is essentially kind of a spin-off of the popular bug out folder uh, with just a few tweaks to make it a little more uh, keyed in towards tactical uses, but they didn't sacrifice the everyday utility in the process. Now this particular version actually fixes a few of the complaints that a lot of folks had over the original version of the bailout and the most immediately apparent and in my opinion, the best upgrade are the aluminum handle scales you get here rather than synthetic griver. It provides a really nice anchor for the rest of the knife to sit in, has a more solid feel in the hand in general, but it's still nice and comfortable. A nice subtle texture going on and a little bit of radius and it really just lives at home in your hand. Now, despite that rigidity, this is not an overbuilt knife and I mean that in the best way possible. They've kept it very EDC friendly, even down to the nice thin blade steel that you've got here. This ensures it's still gonna slice pretty well for your everyday utility tasks, but in order to make sure it could still stand up to some more uh, you know, abuse, shall we say, they went with a nice tough steel 
M4 in this case, which is a steel that can stand up to uh, blade sports competition chopping very well. So that toughness is definitely gonna be felt on this blade too. Now it's not a stainless steel, so they did go with a nice gray coating on here to kind of keep corrosion at bay a little bit. And it's not a super smooth coating like a DLC, but it's not really all that rough either. It's not gonna impede your slicing too much at all. Now the other big tweak we see from the original bailout is that namesake bail has been tweaked a little bit. It is a protruding piece of metal here at the back, forms part of a, uh, a small backspacer, and they've shortened the bail, or they shortened the hole in the bail a little bit so that they could put a nice glass breaker there on the end, which I think is a really smart decision. Gives you a little bit extra without actually giving anything up. Finally, nice pocket clip, which is reversible, and that axis lock, which I know and love. And this is one I've been actually carrying, and it's broken in quite beautifully and is a fantastic companion. All right, next up, we're going to blow the lid off of the, uh, the price ceiling right now with the Shiragorov Quantum coming in just under 1100 bucks right now. Overpriced? Maybe. Impeccably built? Definitely. Now I know what you're saying and I can't afford it either, but it is pretty spectacular. And this is kind of what I'm talking about actually with uh, diminishing returns, so to speak. You're not necessarily gonna get more performance than some uh, less expensive knives, but what you're paying for here is the fit and finish and the absolute eye for detail where they're not gonna accept any compromises in the construction of this knife. The blade itself is about three and three quarters of an inch long, M390 steel, Fairly thick overall, but not necessarily too thick given the overall size of the knife. But nice high flat grind and a really nice, very thin edge, completely consistent all the way from tip back to the edge of the heel. Now this is a titanium frame lock flipper with some really nice intricate milling going on in the titanium. Now the spine treatment here is quite nice as well. You can see some nice angular bits going on some nice bits of relief here at the back where your finger would hit when you're flipping the knife and a really well executed lanyard point here at the back in sort of a semi floating fashion that looks really cool. The pocket clip is milled and it actually attaches from inside the handle. You don't see the, uh, the visible screw there. In fact, you only see one visible screw head or one visible conventional screw head here where the, uh, the steel interface between the titanium lock bar and the M390 blade takes place. As for the hardware on the front side, it's essentially a custom head on there, but your standard flat head should work quite nicely, but it's gonna look a little bit more special when you're not adjusting it, which most of the time you're not gonna be adjusting anything. And of course, like always, excellent, excellent flipping action. Ball bearings, absolutely nice and crisp. Now, if you like the style of this knife and like me, can't afford it, this next knife might actually be, or might actually get you close. It's the new Viper Bellone. Now these knives are Italian made and there's just something when, when I get into the higher end knives, I really like what the Italians put out. There just, there always seems to be a little bit of a kind of flair and attitude that is distinctly theirs and that translates into the knives that they build. But there's a bunch of different versions of this executive style gentleman's knife. I've got two here, one of the titanium, or actually they're both titanium underneath. Uh, one of them has titanium onlays, the other has carbon fiber onlays. And price-wise, they start somewhere above 160, uh, so a lot more affordable than that Shirogorov. But it does actually have the same steel. These are M390 blades, coming at about 3.35 inches. I really enjoy the nice sweeping belly going on here. Kind of reminds me of a cross between like an old-school slip joint clip point blade, slip joint clip point. Cross that type of blade with some of the. Uh, kind of the indigenous Italian uh, ethnic knife styles out there, and you'll get something like this, and I, I just really like it. High flat grind, crown spine like you see on a lot of Italian knives, and a nice little bit of jimping here where you can put your index finger out. And as you can see here, a nice subtle flipper tab, and I really appreciate that. It's not something that's gonna snag, not that that's uh, a huge concern in general, but I just love seeing the subtle integration right there. And yes, we've got ball bearings here as well. And despite how small that tab is, it's still very easy to actuate. Also, much like that Shirogorov, we've even got some nice uh, detailing here on the spine where we've got that soft landing point where they've kind of chamfered into the corners there. So when your index finger hits that, it's gonna be nice and comfy. Now I really like the, uh, the kind of two-piece uh, handle aesthetic they've got going on here. You've essentially got a titanium frame lock 
with the, uh, the onlays on top. And on this particular one, the locking section features a stonewashed bronze color, while you've got a standard gray stone wash for the onlays. Creates a nice two-tone look, especially with the little hole cutouts where you can see through to that base layer. You can probably see that even more evidently in this carbon fiber onlay version with the blue layers underneath, which I think looks super classy. We've also got a nice deep carry pocket clip here to keep it out of the way. And I really like this style of clip where they mount it from the tail end of the knife like this. It means there's virtually no chance much is gonna stick up out of your pocket at all. It's gonna stay nice and discreet. And it's not gonna weigh your pockets down either. We're just over three ounces on this. And that's a lot of capability and a lot of style in this package. Plus you've got a good name attached to it. This is a Jesper Vacnaeus design. All right, one more Italian knife in this bracket, and that's the Lion Steel Thrill. Uh, this particular one actually uh, starts at about 120 uh, because it's the aluminum version, but the titanium handled versions creep up up to about 200. And still my favorite thing that I remember seeing at SHOT Show earlier this year, and it's pretty much the most advanced slip joint knife on the market. Now the blade itself is just over three inches, M390 steel, drop point with a nice slicey full flat grind, but that's not what makes this special. It's actually the integral handle construction. The back spring and the sides of this knife are all one single piece of metal, whether it's the aluminum or titanium. Lion Steel, of course, is very well known for their integral frame locks. So it's real cool to, from a branding perspective at least, to see them do this on a slip joint like so. They've even taken a hint from some of the modern frame lock uh, proclivities and put a hardened insert here between the back spacer or the back spring and the blade itself. But what's most impressive is they still manage to get really excellent walk and talk with that half stop along the way that truly is excellent. Well, I said excellent twice. I must have meant it. On top of that too, you've also got something that a lot of traditional pocket knives or traditional slip joints lack, and that's a pocket clip. But it's not actually gonna get in the way when you're using the knife and that's because it's spring loaded to pull flush into the handle as soon as you pull it from your pocket. They call it their H whale system and you actually push this button on the opposite side to push that pocket clip out when you go to put it in your pocket. And as soon as you draw it, like I said, it's flush mounted again. That way there's no hot spot, nothing to mess up the comfort as you're using the knife. All right, last but certainly not least in our folders section, is the Protec Malibu, which come in right at or just under 200 bucks, depending on which version you get. Now you can already see that it has a pretty nice shape, but you can't always tell everything from the pictures and there's a lot more going on that's not quite evident from the photographs you'll see on our website. Now the way I like to describe this knife is it sort of has very understated precision and effortless operation. It just, it feels special when you use it's certainly highly precisely built, but it doesn't really shout about it. And the action is really good. You've got a push button lock, as you probably already noticed, and it flips with just a hint of effort. It flies out quite nicely and then drops shut quite nicely as well when you're ready to put it away. The other thing that's really nice about this folder is they've really maximized the amount of blade to handle ratio that you can see here. Just take a look at where that pivot is. It's pretty close to the leading edge of the handle already. They didn't have to scoot it back all that much. And the tip comes almost all the way to the end of the handle without actually being uh, a nuisance or actually sticking out. It definitely doesn't, but they absolutely crammed just as much blade as they could in giving you about 3.3 inches of CPM 20 CV steel. It's got my favorite stone washed finish and you can get it in this reverse Tonto or a modified Warncliffe shape, which are both gonna work very well for everyday carry. Now the matte finished handles are black, and that's kind of the only two standard versions uh, we have right now are black handles with those two blade shapes. So I'm really excited to see what they come out with uh, in the future in terms of different variants. But it's got a nice silky feel, the anno's done very well. And I also appreciate the way they've executed this button lock. It sits there in a little recess in the handle, but the top of it is actually flush with the top of the handle. So it's very hard to accidentally disengage a button lock, something I eh, maybe worry about sometimes. Don't worry about that here. And it could even lay flat on the table since it's uh, not creating a protrusion there. Lastly, deep carry pocket clip, right side tip up only. But like I've uh, mentioned on a few, 
They've done it very well because it's inset with flush screw heads, exactly what you wanna see from a deep carry clip. All right, now we're gonna move on to fixed blades and because it's me, you know there's gonna be some nice outdoorsy stuff here, um, but that's not all I'm gonna show you and we're gonna start with the Becker BK-18. Now a new Becker knife is pretty much always exciting because you get American made construction and a decently priced knife for what you're getting. But it also combines some of the best characteristics of two discontinued Beckers. For one thing, it's got a nice long sweeping profile. You can kind of think of that like some BK-15 DNA, but you've also got a nice aggressive forward piercing tip of the BK-17. Comes together on this knife for a good blend of tactical and camping needs in one package. It's even got enough of a drop to the edge to make a pretty decent food prep knife, especially if you decide to remove the coating. And that's on top of 1095 CV carbon steel, which is time proven and still effective. Now the handles are not overly large, but they're nice and smooth and contoured for both comfort and retention in your hand. And the sheath here is excellent too. It's got positive retention, versatile attachment capabilities, and it also makes a great platform for strapping on other survival goodies if you're the kind of person out there who likes to build out kits. All right, next up, we've got something that's not a typical genre you might see on a best of list, but it's a really nice whittling bushcraft design from LT Wright. This is the Pronghorn. And while it may look fairly simple, thanks to its uh, Puko style heritage, this is the perfect knife for spending hours beside a fire just whittling away. It's also pretty affordable considering that these are small batch American made knives that aren't turned out in a factory. You get a nice lifetime warranty and they only start at just under a hundred bucks. Those versions will have Micarta and O1 steel. This particular version has a number of upgrades. You can also get it with a 3V blade and these desert ironwood handles with orange liners that look really good. That blade itself is right under that three inch mark. Not so much a worry in terms of everyday carry because that's not necessarily this style of knife, but it's got an eighth inch thick blade with that nice razor sharp Scandi grind. And then the handle itself, nice and neutral. You guys know why that's important. I can get all four of my fingers on that handle. Feels nice and comfortable. And it's ready to go to town. You got a lot of different grip options as well. You've got scallops not only here at the front, but also at the tail of the knife. So you've got a bunch of different ways to manipulate the blade as you go around and do that small whittling or other small camp craft tasks. Also like all LT rights or pretty much all LT rights, you've got a nice crisp spine here. You can use that for striking a fire steel, of course, but that also does come in handy with uh, during some whittling tasks. If you need to smooth down some, uh, some facets and some wood, I found that to be a decent tool for some of that stuff as well. Also comes with a nice JRE Industries leather sheath. Nice classic pattern that's ready to go with you just like the knife is. All right, next up is the new versions of the SE6. Coming in about 143 right now and factory contoured handles have been a long time coming to the SE lineup and they're finally here. And for me, the one that benefits especially the most from it is the six. This is a knife that already had established itself as one of the premier American made survival knives. And now it's gotten even better because it's just that much more comfortable to use. It's got swells in just the right places, as you can see right there in the middle to fill your hand and a little bit of a flare towards the pommel as well. Now this is not necessarily a chopping blade, but that is going to give you a little bit more uh, retention in the hand if you do need to swing it. Speaking of retention, you do have some real fine milling going on, not enough to raise a hot spot, but it is going to increase the surface area a little bit and give you a, a good handhold overall. Now this particular one is one of the more uh, subtle color variations, but you can get some orange, uh, black and orange handles or black and green handles with orange or green coatings. Uh, and there's some even more subtle versions than this out there too. But again, always good to see choices. Sheath system is nice. It's still the same injection molded sheath. In fact, they didn't even need to make a different part number for these contoured handles. They've kept the shoulders uh, at the leading edge compatible. Now you can carry this either with the included clip plate. This will also fit a uh, standard size tech lock so you can carry it that way also. Blade length is still about six and a half from tip to scale. Good old American 1095, full flat grind, great drop point shape. Gonna work well for splitting wood, carving, bigger carving tasks especially, uh, even some uh, hunting and skinning, despite uh, this being a fairly large knife for that type of thing, it's going to do it all. As a one tool option, which a lot of folks talk about in the survival genre, 
not a bad way to go at all. And definitely my favorite of the SE lineup, especially now with these new handle scales. All right, a couple more, and I'm gonna end with some more affordable stuff, uh, cause it's actually been a really good year for affordable fixed blades. And the first one is the Kershaw Camp 5. This knife has a really solid combination of features for its $60 price point, but I really appreciate the kind of historically inspired blade. Kind of reminds me of a, a little bit of a sized up Green River hunting knife, which take that along with like the butcher knife and the French style trade knife, was really some of the most common blade shapes on the frontier. Really helped conquer the country when it was a much more wild place, but that blade is still gonna work very well today. Blade here is about four and three quarters. You've got D2 steel, nice heavy stonewashed finish, full flat grind, so you're already starting off with some really good slicing geometry, and then a really deep swedge along the spine as well. And that's gonna remove that point of drag when you're trying to move through materials, especially important if you're using this as a hunting knife but it's gonna do that pretty well. It's gonna do food prep decently as well. You've got a little bit of a drop to the edge itself. Not necessarily a great rock chopper, but it's definitely gonna get the job done for you. The handles themselves are a little bit on the narrow side, but they are nice and comfortable. They are glass filled nylon style and they are bolt on as well. But with that bolt on nature, if you wanted to uh, kind of do a project, upgrade it a little bit, this would be a nice fun platform to do some custom handle scales on. Sheath on this and the next knife for that matter, Simple, but effective. It uses injection nylon. You've got a strap here with some snap retention, even though you do have some retention built into the sheath. And because of the slot and grommet points here, you're gonna be able to use those tech locks if you want a different style of attachment. Finally, to round out our fixed blades today, we've got another budget knife. And this is a knife that punches way above its price point, And it's actually become my favorite number one recommendation for an affordable survival knife, the Cold Steel SRKC coming in at 45 bucks. This knife has got the stamina for really rugged environments, and the design even has some tactical applications too, so it's a good all-rounder. Now we've got a five inch blade, and I actually like it better than the full-sized SRK, which is about an inch longer. The steel here is thinner, about an eighth of an inch, and it's more efficient and still plenty strong thanks to the coated SK5 carbon steel on the blade. Plus you got a flat grind for more durability behind the edge than the larger knife with its hollow grind. The handle itself is grippy, it's fairly neutral, and it even incorporates an appropriately sized finger guard for safety. Plus, like the last knife, the sheath is simple, durable, and versatile. Now this knife does have a few compromises to hit that price point, but not many, and for most people it actually wouldn't make any difference. Mainly for me, I tend to prefer a non-rubberized handle with less texture, but that does not change the fact that I think this is the budget survival knife to beat. All right, that is it for my picks for my personal favorite top 20 knives of 2020. It's been a crazy year, but at least we've gotten to see some really cool knives through all of it. Make sure to let me know what you think of these knives down in the comments, but more especially, I wanna know what your favorites are as well. Be sure to let us know. Meantime, if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. So that's it for now. We do have a few more videos that are gonna be coming out, of course, before the end of the year. Uh, but thanks to everyone who stuck with us through this year. We've seen a lot of excellent growth here on the channel. We appreciate everyone who's subscribed and we hope you keep sticking around. We'll keep making videos for you if you do. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.